Do you struggle with inattention, that is daydreaming or being easily distracted? Do you struggle with hyperactivity, you're really hyper, you're wired, you're restless? What about impulsivity? You're spontaneous, you do things without thinking. Or do you have problems getting started or initiating tasks? And once you get started, do you have problems completing those tasks? Do you have problems being under aroused or just not having the get up and go to go do what you'd like to get accomplished? What about procrastination, which is very similar to your difficulty of initiating task? What about just being under motivated and under achieving? You know that you can do better, but you just aren't following through and getting the job done. Do you have difficulty organizing your home, if you're a student, maybe your notebook, your work area, or do you have real struggle with management of your time? Hello, my name is Dr. Carolyn T. Long, and I'm a therapist, I'm a therapist, minister, author, and consultant. And I want to talk to you a few brief moments about attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD. Now this is the symptoms I've listed are just the beginning of ADHD symptoms of childhood but this vid video is not really about childhood ADHD it is about ADHD in adult women. Many women were ha with an undiagnosed ADHD disorder have grown up thinking that there was something terribly wrong with them but they never really knew what to call it. They never really knew that they had a diagnosable mental health disorder that was also very treatable. These women may have suffered unnecessarily under functioning and underachieving both at home and at school. These women may have struggled in their daily lives believing that they were lazy and unmotivated. And maybe even that was told them, and certainly that would have affected their self-esteem. Historically, ADHD was seen as a disorder of mainly boys, and that they suffered inattention, distractibility, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. What we now know in recent years is that ADHD affects people throughout their lives and that they um, may not be hyperactive um, or impulsive, but many also struggle with inattention. Until 1996, 96% 96 of all research in this area was related again to young boys. But since that time, uh, research in ADHD has been done to include women and girls. And the criteria now is gender, has a gender perspective. In addition to the childhood criteria mentioned above, criteria also involves learning issues, social interpersonal issues, psychological issues such as moodiness, anxiety, feeling criticized and misunderstood, problematic behaviors such as impatience, being easily frustrated, and taking risky behaviors. Adult criteria also includes inattention and the distractibility that we see in children. It, it also includes difficulty in making transitions, the hyperactivity, impulsivity that we've already mentioned, as well as problems with initi initiation and completion of projects. Other symptoms include problems making decisions, problems related to learning disabilities, and difficulty with adult responsibilities. You know those adults, those adults who struggle with parenting, they struggle with uh, taking care of their workplace, they struggle with maintaining their life uh, activities such as keeping their house, buying the groceries, uh, balancing the checkbook, or they may be people who are crisis prone. There's just one crisis after another. And many of these crises may be related to the fact that they are very poorly organized. 
Another uh, criteria or another area where they have difficulty with adult responsibilities is in that whole area of financial management. And I think I already mentioned uh, difficulty uh, balancing the checkbook, uh, maybe large credit card debt. They are not keeping up with the fact they're there just uh, pulling out their plastic and using it, as well as sloppy record keeping of their finances which again results in the poor credit rating, which again causes uh, additional psychological stress for them. This is just a partial list of criteria for ADHD in adult women. The, act the list is actually pretty long. Now as I've called out some of these uh, criteria for ADHD in adult women, have you heard anything that maybe pertains to you or maybe to someone very close to you. If I've raised your interest in this subject, then I would ask you to seek further uh, understanding, seek, for, seek further information about this. If you perhaps are diagnosed with ADHD as an adult woman, then I want you to know that there is hope, there is help, and there is healing. There, there are resources to help you live the abundant life, even if you do have this diagnosable disorder. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to hearing from you.